The Outer Gate from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox by Jeannie Whitfield Life said, My house is thine with all its store. Behold, I open shining ways to thee. Of every inner portal make thee free. O oh, child, I may not bar the outer door. Go from me, if thou wilt, to come no more. But all thy pain is mine, thy flesh of me, and must I hear thee faint and woefully call on me from the darkness and implore? Nay, mother, for I follow at thy will, but oftentimes thy voice is sharp to hear, thy trailing fragrance heavy on the breath. Always the outer hall is very still, and on my face a pleasant wind and clear blows straightly from the narrow gate of death. Footnote. This poem, so distinctly prophetic, was written a year and four months before her death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rain. From Poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Jeannie Whitfield. The rain was gray before it fell, and through a world where light had died, there ran a mournful little wind that shook the trees and cried. The rain was brown upon the earth, in turbid stream and tiny seas, in swift and slender shafts that beat the flowers to their knees, the rain is mirror to the sky, to leaning grass an image clear, and drifting in the shining pools, the clouds are white and near. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Best Loved From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Jeannie Whitfield it was a joy whose stem I did not break, A little thing I passed with crowded hands, And gave a backward look for beauty's sake. Of all I pulled and wove and flung aside, Was any hue preferred above the rest? I only know they pleased me well and died. But this, it lives distinct in memory's sight, a little thing, in curving like a pearl, I think its heart had never seen the light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rose From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Eric Metzler Albuquerque, USA I pluck a jonquil when the may's a wing, or please you with a rose upon the breast, a sweeter violet chosen from the rest, to match your mood with blue caprice of spring. Leave windy vines a tendril less to swing. Why, what's a flower? A day's delight at best, a perfume loved, a faded petal pressed, a whimsy for an hour's remembering. But wondrous careful must he draw the rose From jealous earth, who seeks to set a new, deep root, Young leafage, with a gardener's art, To plant her queen of all his garden close, And make his varying fancy wind and dew, Cloud, rain, and sunshine for one woman's heart. Footnote the Rose was written for Mr. Porter Garnett on the occasion of his marriage. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Between Two Rains From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Mary Kay It is a silver space between two rains 
The lulling storm has given to the day an hour of windless air and driven gray. The world is drained of color. Light remains. Beyond the curving shore, a gull complains, unceasing on the bastions of the bay. With gleam of shields and veer of vaporing spray, the long seas fall. The gray tide wars and wanes. It is a silver space between two rains. A mood too sweet for tears, for joy, too pale. What stress has swept or nears us, thou and I? This hour a mist of light is on the plains, And seaward fares again with lit and sail, Our laden ship of dreams adown the sky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Message From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Eric Metzler Albuquerque, USA So might it brush my cheek with errant wings, So might it speak with thrilling touch And light of answering eyes, Of dim, unuttered things, A moth from hidden gardens of the night. So, in a land of hills where twilight lay, might come a sudden bird-call to the ear, Across the canyons, faint and far away. O oh, heart, how sweet, half heard, and wholly dear. Footnote. These lines were in response to a long telegram dispatched at night by a distant friend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. By the Hospital From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Eric Metzler Albuquerque, USA Who goes to meet the windy night With unseen comrades shouting by? Who grips a bow in swift delight To let it dip and loose and fly? Who runs for rest that running gives Runs till his throbbing muscles speak? Who bends to feel how keenly lives The joyous grass beneath his cheek. With sudden tears his eyes shall fill, With quick-drawn breath he sees them plain, Those bodies that must lie so still, So tired in the house of pain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O oh, Dryad Thoughts From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Eric Metzler Albuquerque, USA O oh, Dryad Thoughts of lovely yesterday, You melted through a sunny wood like mist, With here a wind of laughter, There a stray pleased flower tipped and kissed. Today among the noises of the street, the press of faces, sullen, gay, and wise. I hear you calling, calling me. I meet your clear, untroubled eyes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Music in the Pavilion From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Faces that throng and stare and come and go, The air a-quiver as the voices meet, And loud humanity in mingled flow Passes with jarring tread of many feet. But over all the chatter of the crowd, The background for its delicate relief, now trembling in a thread, now wild and loud, The violin laughs and sings and cries its grief. Then through it all and round it all, the sea, A solemn heart with never-ceasing beat, Bearing an undertone of mystery, The harsh and lovely notes, the shrill and sweet. Surely it is my life, of plodding days 
with one ideal holding clear and good, and sounding over, under, through my ways, something apart, and never understood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rebuke from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio The tortured river banks, the toiling piers, I walked thereby as older grew the day, And sick with sorry clamor in mine ears, Heart-weary turned my steps and went my way. O oh, place full-voiced of wretchedness, I cried. The sun had set, the dusk was closing in. O oh, place where laboring life goes heavy-eyed, Compound of grime and discord, strife and sin. I turned me back, and lo, a miracle, For misty violet lay along the land, The shining river in mysterious spell, Divinely touched by some transmuting hand, A path of wonder was, and on it stirred, Black-shaped and jeweled with the crimson spark, A ship that slowly moved, and faintly heard, A cheery song rose blithely to the dark. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Camp from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Jennifer Duval Roman numeral one As down I bent with eager lips Above the stones and cresses cool The yellow tent, the little moon I found within my twilight pool The fringing trees, the floating moon The bubble tent, I passed them by And sipped a tiny shattered star Deep drinking from that mirrored sky. Roman numeral two. My tent is shadowed day and night With leaves that shift in moon and sun. Across its walls of lucent white The lovely varied tracings run. And black and slender quickly sped I watched the little feet at dawn. A sudden oriole overhead A darting linnet come and gone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Nymph from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G From the forest path we turned us nymphs new made, And lifting eyes abashed with great desire, Before high Jove the gift of souls we prayed, Whereat he sat, O oh, perfect as new leaves, New glossed and veined with blood of perfect days, And stirred to murmured speech in fragrant heaves. Still ask ye souls, behold, I give instead, Into each breast a bird with feathered wings, A bird fast holden with a silken thread, To fall from trial of flight with strength swift spent, To sing of mating and the brooding grass, To turn thy being earthward to content. Within me sudden wrath and terror strove, And casting forth his gift I cried aloud, I pray thee for a soul in truth, great Jove, then smiled he slowly, lifting to my look, A fabric where the rippled lustre played, And shifted like the humour of a brook. All prism-hued as upward eyes may see, The sun through dazzled lashes straight I cried, I know not this, thy soul, he answered me. But when my joy had ceased it, nay, he said, And cast it gleaming to the scattering wind, Hues green and golden, blue and fervent red. Within his hand the brightest shred of all, The very heart and secret of the web, That held he fast and loosened he not at all. But to me he said, O thou who scorned the dole, That gave thee peace of days and long content, Do now my will go forth and find thy soul. To earth we went, nor knew I from that hour, My sister's joy or pain, but on great morns, When low light slept above a world in flower. Through drowsing noons where heat and collar lies, 
in every wavering tides of airy seas, winged by the darting ships of dragonflies. Through these and twilight peace I went, and rid, my steps of comrades, lonely must I find, the silent places where my soul was hid. In sheltered ways, with summer showers sweet, I wandered on a day, and singing found, the very green I sought beneath my feet. In leafing forest when the year was new, and heaven ribboned in the crossing bows, I gathered marvellous strip on strip of blue. When on a lonely stream the moon was bright, a naiad from her treasure plucked me forth, such gold has bound my web with threads of light. And red, ah, love, thou knowest how I came, unto thy fluting in the breathless eve, and burn my heart's pale flower to scarlet flame. One morn I found within a drop of dew, my very soul, a crystal world it was, were in the varied earth and heaven's blue. And myself gazing glass in perfect sphere, but long above it was my wonder bent, and lo, it dried more swiftly than a tear. Now is the truth, O Jove, that I have won, and woven all the shreds thou gavest the wind, but how I pray thee can my task be done? Unless I ope thine hand, unless I lose the very heart and secret of the web, where every thread may end and know its use. Joy hast thou not with health, nor love denied, nor any beauty dimmed on earth or sky, yet by thy will I roam unsatisfied. But couldst thou hear again the earliest plea, again my choice would flout the lesser gift, and willing take this task thou grantest me, to search the heart and secret of the whole, to twine the eager hues of a varied days, and to its bright perfection weave a soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vivisection from Poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. We saw unpitying skill in curious hands put living flesh apart till bare and terrible the tiny heart pulsed and was still. We saw grief's sudden knife strip through the pleasant flesh of soul disguise, lay for a second space before our eyes a naked life. End of poems. This recording is in the public domain. The Stranger from Poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. She sat so quiet day by day, the sweet withdrawal of a nun, with busy hands and downward eyes, the shyest thing beneath the sun. Nor knew we, tossing each to each our rapid speech, our careless words, that through them always half afraid, her thoughts had gone like seeking birds, plucking a twig, a shining straw, a happy thread with silken gleams, to carry homeward to her heart, and weave a hidden nest of dreams. End of poems. This recording is in the public domain. The Constant Ones, from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by Jennifer Duval. The tossing trees had every flag unfurled, to hail their chief, but now the sun is set. And in the sweet, new, quiet, on the world, the king is dead, the fickle leaves forget. A placid earth, an air serene and still, in misty blue the gradual smoke is thinned. Only the grasses, leaning to his will, the grasses hold a memory of wind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Instinct from Poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Jennifer Duval.
to reason with the praise of one I go, to fall back silent at her whispered no. And always of the other, says she, trust, he doeth thus and thus, O thou unjust. Yet meet one eye to eye and query's end, an eager hand goes out to greet a friend. And let the other please me soon or late, wakes with a hiss the little snake of hate. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. San Francisco, New Year's, 1907 From Poems by Nor May French Read for LibriVox.org by Little T Said the old year to the new, They will never welcome you, as they sang me in and rang me in upon my birthday night all above the surging crowd bells and voices calling loud a throng attuned to laughter and a city all in light kind has been the years of old drowsy lidded zoned with gold they swept their purples down the bay and spread the homeward keel the years of fruits and peace Smiling days and wicks increase, too indolent with wine and sun to grasp the slaying steel. As my brother, so I came, panther treading, silken tame, the sword was light within my hand, I kept it seized and still. The jeweled city prayed me, and the laughing voices stayed me. A little while I pleased them well and gave them all their will. As a panther strikes to slay, so I winched my shuddering prey. I lit above the panic throng my torch's crimson flare, for they made my coming bright and I gave them light for light. I filled the night with flaming wings and terror's streaming hair. There were stately walls and high, as I failed them so they lie, lie like bodies torn and broken, lie like faces seamed with scars, here where beauty drought and pride, ere my touches flamed and died, the empty arches broke the night to frame the tranquil stars, though of all my brother scorned, I, betrayer, go unmourned. It is I who tower shoulder high above the level years. You who come to build anew, joy will live again with you. But Midas I who walked with death and taught the sting of tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Poppy Field from Poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Beyond the tangled poppies lies a lake, and ever sings to him who muses here the murmur of the hidden streams and clear that flow thereto by arching fern and brake. But never slumber heavy does he wake to heed the music calling in his ear nor ever knows the water deep and near a shine with silver lilies for his sake and never he will heed that love of thine the poppies of thy beauty drug his sleep nor heedest thou that i must hear the streams and follow all thy crystal thought and fine and love at last the lilies folded deep within thy soul's unknown beyond his dreams and a poem this recording is in the public domain you from poems by nora may french read for librivox dot org by jennifer duval all elfish woodland things that fancy broods, the comrades of my solitary moods, would crouch when heavy footsteps pass them by, and peer from shelter 
freakish folk and shy. At you they pricked their furry ears in doubt. Then, this one sees, he knows, they cried, come out. They thought to hush their piping till you passed. Come out, they cried, we dare be brave at last. So forth the gay procession sways and weaves, and some are crowned with roses, some with leaves, and all are mine, but some I never knew. I could not wake them, but they come for you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Just a Dog by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King So many times in those dark days Instinct with sudden hope he crept When sad infrequent hands Would raise the startled notes Where sound had slept Seeking the voice he used to hear Close crouching at his master's knees Hoping to find again The dear familiar hand Upon the keys. In very truth, there was a soul behind his brown and faithful eyes. There live some mortals, on the whole, less loving, tender, loyal, wise. And though we give it to decay, his poor old body, worn and scarred, yet he who judges soul and clay will give one dog his just reward. And that would be to let him come toward dim-heard music far and sweet, seeking with eyes rejoiced and dumb, seeking with swift unerring feet, with love supreme to guide him true across the misty ways of space, until he found the one he knew and looked into his master's face. Footnote Of this poem, Just a Dog, a letter says, My cousin, who used often to play on the piano, died, and after his death his dog, when anyone touched the instrument, used to come from wherever he might be to see if the player were not his master. Then he would slink away again. The dog died after a few grieving months. I loved him and made these verses. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mirage from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio I see upon the desert's yellow rim Beyond the trodden sand and herbage white Of level noon intolerably bright A purple lure of love divine and dim i hasten toward the fronded palm trees slim the fountains of the city of delight and stand bewildered to my heart's despite in empty plains where hot horizons swim will i who love the vision gain at last for very love of love the city's gates I, weary, desert-wandering, knowing this, that waiting me the golden doors are fast, and fathom deep in dream, the princess waits, her curving mouth uplifted for the kiss. Footnote for this poem. Mirage is an endeavor to portray the alien attitude of one who had long vainly sought love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dusk from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio Earth's parched lips drink coolness once again, for daylight dies. The young moon dips a threaded gleam where sunset languid lies and slowly twilight opens starry eyes low in the west day's fading embers cast a last faint glow behind a crest where curving hills on primrose paleness show sharp lined in jet dusk stillness broods below 
a first long sigh stirs from the broad and dew-wet breast of night the leaves reply with soft small rustling moths take ghostly flight and waking crickets shrill long-drawn delight End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Spanish Girl, Part One, from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by Jennifer Duval. One, the Vine, to screen this depth of shade that sleeps beyond the garden's shine. On Jose's careful strings there creeps a slender little vine. Jose is kind, but age is cold. My laughter meets his sigh. The house is old, the garden old. O oh, young, the vine and I. I love the web of light it weaves across my half-drawn thread. It speech to me of waking leaves while Jose hears his dead. So ever-reaching, tendril fine, my eager visions run, so as the long day passes twine, my thoughts shot through with sun. 2. The Chapel The vanished women of my race, the daughters of a moldering year, set often in this quiet place, their votive tapers burning clear. The patient waxen wreaths they wove, they hung before the virgin's shrine. To them it was a work of love, Jose decrees a task of mine. They glimmer where a portrait swings, women as proud and white as death. Ah, they could mold these lifeless things. They had no blood, they had no breath. For holiness and meekness strive. Jose would have me pray their prayers. Now Mary, warm and all alive, you shall not think me child of theirs. So many waxen prayers you heard. If I should heap your altar high, With boughs that knew the nesting bird, With flowers that bloomed against the sky. And let my wondering soul ascend, In vivid question, swift surmise. I think your shadowy face would bend, And look at me with startled eyes. 3. The Garden They planted lilies where they might, a drift of vestals slim and tall, that lined these winding paths with white, that filled the court from wall to wall. They shrank from savage splendid heat, as from their teasing fires of hell. Only when morns and eves were sweet, they walked and liked their garden well. Slow moving through a pallid mist, always in black and black they came, with busy rosary on wrist, and all the summer whirled aflame. I planted flowers that know the sun, I brought them in from field and stream, I passed not by the smallest one, That pleased me with a yellow gleam. Then in a hidden chest I found, The marvel of an old brocade, Strange figures on an azure ground, With threads of crimson overlaid. And when the noon is fierce and bright, Along the garden, fold on fold, My silken splendor, like a light, I trail between the aisles of gold. 4. Across Jose's unending drone, Some ancient tale of arms and doom, There came a poignant sweetness blown From sleeping leagues of orange bloom. And lo, the steady candles blurred, Like shining fishes in a net, in Jose's kindly voice I heard, But little one, thine eyes are wet. He vowed the tale had made me weep, Its shadowy woes and courtly speech. Nor knew they passed like wraiths of sleep, The heart a vagrant wind could reach. How can I tell whose fancy floats, As swift and passionate impulse veers, What gust may sweep its rose-leaf boats, Adown a sudden tide of tears? 5. Where man has marred and nature yields, and never plant nor beast is free, along the tame and trampled fields, an old unrest has followed me. Now walk alone, the night and I, 
on foaming reaches curving stark, and battling with a windy sky, the stormy moon is bright and dark. Facing the sea with streaming hair, my broken singing flung behind, whipped by the keen, exultant air, till lips must close and eyes are blind. Loving the sharp and cruel spray, the great waves thundering, might on might, the pagan heart must shout and sway, tossed in the passion of the night. Six. Oh, never wings, the sisters chide, wild upward wings that shine and blur, nor mourn they winds of eventide that bid the rhythmic garden stir. And yet this life I cannot still, this winged and restless strength of flight that swings me down a singing hill or answers to the calling night. They curb when I would dance, would dance, but all the graven saints, it seems, most strange they make for my mischance, no grim confessional of dreams. The flower of heart's desire is sown in fields unknown to waking sight. Down glittering spaces, all alone, I whirl the fire of my delight. Then, on the music's ebb and flow, pause as a poising bird is hung, with supple body swaying low, with parted lips and arms upflung. 7. Always of heaven, the sisters tell, although of earth I question most, I would I knew the world as well as Peter and the angel host. Jose may journey, never I, in all the lonely hours I spend. He bids me tell my beads and sigh. I wonder if the saints attend. For when the moon is small and thin, and night is fragrant on the land, the earth and I are so akin, I think no saint could understand. Something within me sleeps by day, to moon and wind its petals part. It is not for my soul, I pray, ah, virgin, for my untried heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Spanish Girl, Part 2, from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. 1. This weak and silken love that meshes me, breaks strand from strand, O branches of the hill, brave wind that whips me breathless, tear me free, the witch's cobweb clings and shivers still. Now ferns there were, and fretted sun above, I plunged me where the silver water fell but could not drown the little singing love, the little love that murmured like a shell. Swift, swift to drink my freedom at its flood, I ran with flying feet and lips apart, but love was wilder than my leaping blood, ah, louder than the beating of my heart. 2. I must not yield, but if he would not sing, my stealing hands upon my breast can feel its answer tremble like a muted string below the valued window where I kneel. He sings, he sings to stars and listening skies, a white and haunted place my garden seems. I see the pleading beauty of his eyes as faces glimmer in a pool of dreams. So wooing wind might sweep a harp awake, O oh, muting fingers on each quivering string, I must not yield. I think my heart will break, Mother of Heaven, if he would not sing. 3. Now bending like a windy stem I strive, Yet ever onward, step by step descend. The silence is a threat, the dark alive, And love how far, how far my journey's end. It is the girl who dream I leave behind, And sweeter vision never witched a maid. Into the threatening shades I wander blind, Ah, uh, Mary, help me now, I am afraid. Yet with my fears I sway and follow still. The doorway gleams the pleading magic charms. Step after step with fluttering breath and will. Step after step. At last. Into his arms. 4. Beyond this purple shadow glows. My golden garden loud with bees. And windy grey in silver flows. Along the slopes of olive trees. Before a sleeping flower uncurled, 
before the early winds were born, I woke for joy in such a world, and with the linnets shared the morn. Remembering love, I woke and smiled, and heard the morning linnets sing, and sang for love, and they for wild, delight of song and sun and spring. 5. Surely a brightness moves with me, for Jose's gaze is long and sighs, above the pages dimmed to see, for ghosts of youth that brush his eyes. And gazing long, old Marta said, Some new device has made thee fair, Yet have I often seen these red, Pomegranate flowers against thy hair. I would not have them understand The hidden thoughts that give me grace, Nor guess the lights that dreams have fanned, And read their shining in my face. But all my heart a virgin knows, Before her eyes so wise they were, I laid my secret like a rose. Mother I love, I cried to her, Six, I had no more imagined love than dreams the moon flower in its blue, what sun that warmed its shielding glove, what long blind eve that gave it dew, could tell that hueless folded thing of shining texture silken loomed, or say what marvelling birds would sing the morning that it thrilled and bloomed. Always I knew in groping thought some end would come, some bloom must be. The blind fulfilment that it wrought was strained from darkness restlessly, till the exquisite completion willed, the answered bud, the dream put by, and left the flower all sunned and stilled with sudden wonder of the sky. 7. My eyes are level with the grass, and up and down each slender steep I watch its tiny people pass. The sun has lulled me half asleep, and all beneath my breath I sing. This joy of mine is sweet to hold, Such treasures has the miser king, Who brushed the very dew to gold. Deep in the sunny grass I lie, And breathe the garden scents wind-driven, So happy that if I should die, They could not comfort me with heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Spanish Girl, Part Three, from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. One. One time I felt the sun in all my veins, and bloomed on crystal mornings flower-wise, and mourned as roses saddened in long rains. What pains is this the summer noon denies? One time the hands of wind upon my hair could heal me like a mother's touch and kiss. When I could give my airy griefs to air, I never knew so sharp a thorn as this. The joy of flower and wind and sighing bough, It comes not back again for tears and rue. A year agone I had not sought as now, And found the sky a vault of empty blue. 2. He loves no more, upon the failing streams, The summer burns, so burns another flame. I see his eyes alight with alien dreams, that long-forgotten country whence he came. Calls to him past my words, beyond my eyes, Lost waters shine, remembered sunsets die. I, in my kiss, another mouth replies, And speaks of kisses past, of lips put by. Now this my heart divines for words of love. He gives me still, O oh, woeful heart and bruised, To still complain, but surely when I move. His eyes will never follow as they used. 3. The soul that made love exquisite is gone. It is not that the word, the kiss, is changed. I cannot say, here was his thought withdrawn. So once was love, so now is love estranged. But all of love that I could touch and know, I held as one a lamp that makes his day. And touch it still, and see its flame burn low, Its shining figures fade to painted clay. Ah, I would hold the semblance, keep the kiss, but watching in its heart the paling spark, I cry out when the shadows menace this, As children weep for terror of the dark. 4. That all tomorrows have no wound in store, For shrinking joy nor any prick of dread, I know who closed its eyes for evermore, And keep this night a vigil with my dead. This little space my outthrown hands have stirred, Is happy earth for once it knew love's feet, Hence one's love stood and called the heart that heard, And all the garden, all the world, grew sweet. I lay my joy within this hollowed space, 
I had not thought so blithe a thing could die, And heap the happy earth upon the face That has no will to smile, nor breath to sigh. With dew beneath and hushing night above, I cannot tell how long my grief has lain. Virgin, I will not plead you for my love, Only the pain, if you would ease the pain. 5. The world below was deep in stormy cloud, But high in sun we flew along the ledge. And to the strength I rode, I cried aloud, And spurred it ne'er against the trembling edge. I rode Raman along the mountain wall. Today he had no wilder mood than I, No wilder will for Lorna's wind to call. Upon the narrow trails that meets the sky, The sharp air flowed like water through my hands. Heart, how I skirted death and laughed at pain, Forgotten pain in half-remembered lands, Below me in the valleys with the rain. Six. What alters with my changing, not her say, Content in little duties that he loves, Not Martha's dimming eyes that stare away, Beyond the tranquil court the circling doves. I too, I float on peace, forget almost, And then as drowning sight may pierce the sea, To find the sun a green and wavering ghost, And shapes of earth distorted monstrously. I see a mocking earth, a sun distraught, I lose the buoying instant of relief, And sink again as wearing soul and thought, Drown in the sick amazement of my grief. 7. I tilt my hollowed life and look within, The wine it held has left a purple trace, Behold a stain where happiness had been, If I should shatter down this empty vase. Through what abysses would my soul be tossed, to meet its judge in undiscovered lands. What sentence meted me alone and lost, Before him with the fragments in my hands? Better the patient earth that loves me still Should drip her clearness on this purple stain. Better my life upheld to her should fill With limpid dew and gradual gift of rain. 8. Some whim of Martha shields me from the night, And fretted that my curtain should be kept, Close drawn and wakeful candles over bright, I welcomed in the quiet moon and slept. Then woke again in fear, the night was cold, The witching tide of silver shut away, And Martha's shaking hand on mine was cold, Her bending face above me strange and grey. Who sleeps beneath the moon, she whispered low, Must pale with her, nor wind nor noonday sky, Be his again whose pulses beat more slow, more faint, till with the waning moon they die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Garden of Dolores from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand. The Garden of Dolores. Here she walked when fretted in the twilight's pallid space. The trees were black and delicate as lace, And palms were etchings, sharp and slender-stalked. Now riot summer in these magic closes, And life is rounded in the frailest spray. Dolores, cold and buried yesterday, Is it thy spirit here among the roses? For restless murmurs through the garden seek, To shadowy caress the flowers unclose, A blossom in the dark magnolia glows, Or leaning pallor of an oval cheek. Upon the dusk is born a strange long cry, And one quick sob of wind the air has moved. Ah, perfect garden that Dolores loved, Her soul has called to thee. A far goodbye. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Indifference From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie Ward There is a thread from you to me. I know, I feel it drawing still, A cobweb on my careless thought, Old habit likeness, what you will. Because it once was strong as fate To bind a life to your desire, Because it knots about my heart, Could burn me like a witch's wire. You will not think it loosed, And I, Ah, woman's soul that prayed, destroy, free from the fretting of my pain, have killed the fitful strength of joy. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. After Knowledge from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie Ward You found my soul an untried instrument And I closed it fast and bade you take the key Serene in my unquestioning content That you alone could wake the harmony I gave the key, indifferent though it cost Familiar lightness of unskilled touch, the music to the master. If I lost, he lets the little go who profits much. Uh, then the keen, reluctant knowledge grew that though the chords were helpless in your will, you had nor wit, not power, to sound them true, discordant they, or else forever still. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Spendthrift Kings From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org By Asaf Kos These tawny sheaves, this fragrant land Two spendthrift kings have found and seized and vagabondia may demand its pockets lined its troubles eased we hold our deed as fancy wheels we own the world by right and law the hidden gold in all the hills the sweetness in a yellow straw end of poem this recording is in the public domain Growth from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Asaf Kos I twine you little trellis close and fond And swing in wistful threads above beyond For air and space to blossom, be it so Ah me, I love you, but the plant must grow I quiver with the call of summer heat, With all the wild sap stirring at my feet, My quiet trellis, impotent to know, The earth and sun command me, I must grow. You cannot share my ardent life apart, Nor feel the upward straining of my heart. In every vein the urging currents flow, Leaf after leaf unfolds, the plant must grow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Change from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Beloved, have I turned indeed so cold? My eyes are faithful, grieving with your grief. And if the year itself could grow not old, Could stand at waking sap and budding leaf, An April heart might keep its first unrest, An April love the petals of its spring. When all the birds are silent in my breast, How can I answer when you bid me sing? The autumn hills are brown, you will not see. The saddened woodland speaks and finds you strange, Ah, dear one, all my world is kin to me. And with the swerving days I change, I change. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wisteria From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson the blue wisteria hangs with bloom, the place of memories far away. My heart has ached with it today. The blue wisteria is in bloom. And one may pass so near, so near with half-remembering eyes and cold, where quickening with the budding year it clusters perfect as of old. And one at sight of wizened sprays, reluctant in an alien spring, must feel the sharp, unblunted sting, the pang of unforgotten days. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Nook from Poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Shiloh Fusello. My Nook. Oh, halfway up the hill it was, where one might sit leaf hidden and stare across the canyon depths to distant miles of blue. Upon the little path to it, no foot might step unbidden. It was my nook, and mine alone, and not another knew. And when my doll was sawdust, or my little hopes were fated, or all my world was shaken by a little idol's fall, up to my dear retreat I'd climb, with grief or anger waited, and hands behind fern-pillowed head straight away forget it all with tears yet damp upon my cheeks i'd fall to castle building the careless linnets fluttered near a little maid so still and all the gorgeous tints i knew and all the wealth of gilding were lavished on the future that i summoned there at will when one is small the troubles come and then the tears must follow when one is small, one finds it good to run and cry alone. But I shall laugh to think that once I found my world so hollow. I shall not need this little nook, I thought, when I am grown. Now heart whose voice I drown by day to hear in hours of waking, now eyes whose tears must burn the more, because they may not flow. From sight of face or sound of speech, if I could bear your aching, and bury it deep hidden in the ferns of long ago. But, oh, the pensive little ghost among her visions sitting, would view her weeping future with so piteous surprise. No, I must leave her in her nook to dream her dreams unwitting. I could not take my troubles there, I could not meet her eyes. Footnote my Nook was written at the age of sixteen. End of poem. When plaintively and near the cricket sings. From poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Now evening comes. Now stirs my discontent. O oh, ache of smallest unforgotten things how sharp you are when day and dark are blent when beetles hurry by with vibrant wings and plaintively and near the cricket sings the sighing garden calls me from the door above the hills a little crescent swings above the path where you will come no more when beetles hurry by on vibrant wings and plaintively and near the cricket sings. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Little Memories from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson My thoughts of you, although I strain and sigh at stubborn roots at boughs that tear my face no plants in all my garden grow so high nor fill with sturdier life a wider place it pleases me and wakes an old delight to go with wordy shears in idle times and trim them as a patient gardener might clipping the thorny boughs to curves and rhymes if these were all opposing strength with strength to make my hurt an easier thing to bear if these alone usurped my garden's length it would not be so hard i should not care but close to the ground o oh small and weak the trodden flowers the little memories grow uprooting fingers press them to my cheek dear heart i love you and I miss you so. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Passed by by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Ian King. 
Mind said, pass by, the garden withers, for the spring is dry, for words of thine, for tears, it will not flow. The long road calls a wanderer, rise and go. Heart said, pass by, the flowers were pale and scentless, let them die, and down the road forget your pathway, take to find beneath the song my fine small ache, and gather flowers blue and flowers red, to hear my whisper of the white ones dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Empty Courts by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org By Ian King His love is warm and constant as the sun Like sunlight in the outer spaces spent In empty courts where tumbling fountains run And flowers bloom and he is well content To you my heart must turn for all its light Alas, the grudging taper that you give, So small to make the inner temple bright, So dim to give the glow by which I live. He is the sun for all the world to mark, So warm and fair he shines, Nor understands that I must still be crouching in the dark, Shielding a little flame with loving hands. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Down the Trail from Poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. Break camp, the dawn is here. A sea has swept beneath us in the night, poured outward in a wrinkled flora white, and left our airy clear. There in the deeps the little trail is curled. We plunge like divers to the underworld. The manzanita stirs. Look in that little thicket just ahead. Down, down the covey wears, mocking us, careful lead, slow slipping beads along a slender thread. Here we tread yellow leaves, sun in the sycamores, sun on the granite walls. All is so still, never wind blows, only the singing stream shouts little waterfalls. We round the mighty shoulder of a hill, Oh, sweet airs damp with ferns, the day is old, the lengthening shadows chill, the wanderer returns. Traffic and wakeful eyes of little lights, the black crowd passing near and far away, a fading rose of sunset hanging low above the roofs of indigo and grey. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bells from Over the Hills Sound Sweet, Russian Proverb, from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by Lainey Butler, February 1, 2015, Exton, Pennsylvania, LaineyButlerVoices.com. Oh, when the afternoon is long and hazy, so still the valley lies, so still, so still with sweeping smoky spirals blue and lazy with yellow light aglow from hill to hill sometimes the echoes startle with my singing sometimes a bird the heavy silence fills and always i can hear them ringing ringing my mocking bells my bells from over the hills sweetly faintly ring they cruel ring they Captive in your prison, hear us call. Message from a life of action bring they. Life beyond these hills more sweet than all. Would that I could heed their call and follow, Waking while this drowsy valley sleeps. Follow fortune over hill and hollow, Rest from her the treasures that she keeps. My freedom gained, what fate would be foretelling? Still, Hills and hills beyond would stretch for aye. Peace in this little valley has its dwelling, And that the chase would profit, who shall say? For hopes and dear delights, 
Ah, who can near them? Something ungained, the heart with longing fills. And follow though I might, I still should hear them. The mocking bells, the bells from over the hills. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Town and Moods from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand. In Town The long street where the people go, it is not like the paths I know, yet can I find the morning there all crystal light and early air. Sharp angled roofs in slanting sun grow dimmer as they slope and blend until they crowd no more, and one may see his mountains at the end. Then when the day has had her will, I lean upon my window sill and watch them floating clean and high, my sunset ships across the sky. Moods 1. Sweet grasses tasseled bent and tall, and sweet last light across the meadow, the wind has tangled left them all, in webs of green, in silver shadow. And to your speech my heart replies, still silvering to each word that passes, until a tangled joy it lies, a shining web of wind-blown grasses. 2. A memory of tears that day, of small and piteous lives misused, the fallen bird we could not save, the butterfly we helped and bruised, and last to fill repentant eyes, most bright and frail of winged things, a moment's faith, an hour's love, grieving the dust with broken wings. End of poems. This recording is in the public domain. A Misty Morning from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Jessie Leewug Low arched above me as I moved, the hollowed air was clear. Beyond was whiteness dim and strange, and spectral shapes drew near. Upon the little shore of brown that touched the misty sea, upon the shadowy borderland, one paused and looked at me, then hurried on with greeting smile and sudden vivid face. A friend had started into life within my magic space. Into the world of ghosts again, I watched him fade away. First black he was, then dim he was, then merged in formless gray. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two songs from poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org. By Jesse Leewug. You love the chant of green, the low voiced trees, the meadows monotone. O oh, friend of mine, it is for these you pray. This alien land must call unheard and seen, while one beloved note your heart has known to hunger for it half a world away. Come with me to my height and stand at sunset. When the winds are still, watching the hollow valleys brim with light, the red and brown and yellow hills they shout, and on the shoulders of the marching host, the bayonets are gleaming points of white, pressing beyond to deep and gradual blues, their lessening voices die in distance pale, ineffably dissolved in opal hues. Against the sky, the last sweet echoes fail, While all the west is quivering, fold on fold, To one great voice, one vibrant peal of gold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Noon from Poems by Nora May French 
Read for LibriVox.org by Elton Kane. The brook flowed through a bending arch of leaves, flowed through an arch of leaves into the sun, but all was shadow where it left my feet, a shade with netted ripples overrun, a brook that flowed in coolness to the sun. Beyond the arch of shadow color lay, vivid to narrowed eyelids fiercely bright, and bright the happy water slipped away in gleaming pools and broken lines of light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Your Beautiful Passing From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Alton Kane Across my thought has trailed your beautiful passing As a wild bird ruffles the motionless brink of the water Moving in gradual path on its mirror of shadow After him streaking and trembling Long ripples of silver End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. By Moonlight From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Dom Bombadil By Moonlight Is this the world I knew? Beneath the day it glowed with golden heat, with vivid hues. Mountains and sky that merged in melting blues, And hazy air that shimmered far away. This world is white beneath a silver sky, White with pale brightness, luminously chill. The moon reigns queen, but faintly shining still, The dim stars glimmer on the hilltops high. Here, where long grasses touch across the stream, That threads with bubbling love its narrow way, my face turned upward to pale gleams that stray Through whispering willow boughs. I dream and dream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. One Day From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Dom Bombadil One Day the levels where the trail began were sown with silver gray. We bruised the leaves with hurrying feet to wafts of strong and tarry sweet, a moment's pleasure as we ran, forgotten on our way. Above, along the farthest crest, in every brief and breathless rest, the spice of sage was ours, crushed from the dull and slender leaves, the tiny yellow flowers, when day was done. No more remembered than the wind and sun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mission Graves From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson By Man Forgotten Nature remembers with her fitful tears. The wooden slabs lose name and date with years, And crumble rotten. The padre there, on saint's day, From an evening right returning, Set for each unknown soul a candle burning With muttered prayer. Glowworms, they shone strange, spectral gleaming Through the lonely dark. Whose nameless dust did each faint glimmer mark? Skull, crumbling bone. Ah, the dead knew. The grateful dead, far called from voids of space. Each by the tiny spark that gave him grace, Watched the night through. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Along the Track From Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org By Larry Wilson The track has led me out beyond the town To follow day across the waning fields The crisping weeds and wastes of tender brown On either side the feathered tops are high 
a tracery of broken arabesques upon the sullen crimson of the sky into the west the narrowing rails are sped they cut the canyon softness of the dusk with thin converging gleams of bloody red end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Place of Dreams from Poems by Nora Mae French Read for LibriVox.org by Ashley Here, will we drink content, comrade of mine? Here, where the little stream to meet the sun flows down a yellow rock like yellow wine. Here, will we launch a leaf to distant shores and in it shut a word for wonderland, the blue unknown beyond the sycamores. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Think Not, O Lilius, from Poems by Nora May French. Read for LibriVox.org by Ashley. Think not, O Lilius, that the love of this night will endure in the sun. Hast thou beheld fungi, white, evil, rosy lined, poisonous, shrivel in the eyes of day? In this wilderness of strange hearts, it is not thine alone that concerns me. Many brave hearts of men are more to me than thine. The hearts of men breathe deeply. As for thy heart, it runs from me. It is quicksilver. It does not concern me greatly. Footnote. Think not, O Lilius. These prose lines were recalled out of a dream. They are included here because of their singular beauty. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Rosy Buds from Poems by Nora May French Read for LibriVox.org by Ashley To Rosy Buds in Orchards of the Spring to melting clouds in endless deeps of air. My love shall lift a swelling throat and sing, akin to all things fugitive and fair. They shut love from his heaven, and he sings, but captive eyes are pitiful to see. O oh, flashing sun on upward beating wings, O oh, tumbling notes of joy, my bird is free. Dear love, forever strange, beloved most. Dear fleeting buds, bear not your fruit and die. Be this a path forever found and lost, a drift of bloom upon an April sky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Yesterday, from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by Jordan Heron. Now all my thoughts were crisped and thinned to elfin threads, to gleaming browns, like tawny grasses lean with wind, they drew your heart across the downs. Your will of all the winds that blew, they drew across the world to me, to thread my whimsy thoughts of you, along the downs, above the sea. Beneath a pool beyond the dune, so green it was and amber-walled, a face would glimmer like a moon, seen whitely through an emerald. And there my mermaid fancy lay and dreamed the light and you were one, and flickered in her seaweed sway a broken largesse of the sun. Above the world as evening fell I made my heart into a sky, And through a twilight like a shell I saw the shining seagulls fly. I found between the sea and land And lost again, unwrit, unheard, A song that fluttered in my hand And vanished like a silver bird. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Mourner and Ave at Que Vale from Poems by Nora May French, read for LibriVox.org by K. Hand. The Mourner Because my love has wave and foam for speech, and never words, as yearns as water grieves, with white arms curving on a listless beach, and murmurs inarticulate as leaves. I am become beloved of the night, her huge sea lands ineffable and far, hold crouched and splendid sorrow eyed with light, and pain who beads his forehead with a star. Ave at que vale. It gathers where the moody sky is bending, it stirs the air along familiar ways, a sigh for strange things dear forever ending, for beauty shrinking in these alien days. Now nothing is the same, old visions move me. I wander silent through the waning land, and find for youth and little leaves to love me, the old, old lichen crumbling in my hand. What shifting films of distance fold you, blind you, this windy eve of dreams I cannot tell. I know they grope through some strange mist to find you, my hands that give you greeting and farewell. Footnote Yesterday and the mourner which follows it are the last poems. Ave at que vale was written some two years before. The responsibility for these notes lies with Mr. Henry Anderson Laffler, who has edited this book. Thanks are due to Mr. George Sterling and Mr. Porter Garnett, who have lightened the labor of its preparation. End of Poems This recording is in the public domain. End of Poems by Nora May French